Good afternoon. This is Brian Shannon from Alpha Trends Blogspot. It is Wednesday, August 22nd, 2007, and once again we had a strong market. The S&P 500 finished with a gain of 1.2%. These spiders were up $1.76, and they got back above the 200-day uh, moving average. Yesterday I had, uh, pointed out that it's been below that for eight straight, straight sessions, but today it did make it back above that level, and it puts into play that uh, uh, inverted head and shoulders pattern that I had uh, outlined a couple days ago. Now we're back above the 10 and 20 day moving average, but they are declining. And another potential negative here is once again, we see diminishing volume. Is that because it's a summer uh, week, some people are asking? Well, these were all summer weeks over here too. And uh, you know we had much heavier volume pretty much all summer. It's been a heavy volume um, market. So uh, I don't really put a lot of weight into that seasonality, but it is maybe sometimes a factor and perhaps it's a factor now. But I point that volume out only to say once again that it, it, it takes second to place, not even second place, but it, it always takes a back seat, volume that is, to price. Everything takes a back seat to price. Price is again the only thing that pays us. And this is a potential problem if we're, it, it just leaves the market a little bit more vulnerable. But now we've got a market that's back up above this uh, 144, 145 level and seems to have good support there now. So it looks like there's a pretty solid little level of support underneath this market. You do have to remain uh, cautious. Um, last week uh, on Thursday, I said this big volume without further upside progress equaled accumulation. We had follow through the next day and it continues to see that follow through. We've also got the market back above a rising five day moving average. So that's a positive here. And this is the inverted head and shoulders pattern that I was pointing out in here. And it might not be the best formed one, but you can look at it and see that it's broken out. Yesterday I had outlined uh, the potential for, I think, a 152 price objective based on that. Maybe it was even 154. Um, but the point is it does measure higher. I'm not going to get too carried away with what the price objective is because that's just a potential level for where it can go. Uh, but it would be the height of this right here, which is 138 to 146. So I guess it would be uh, about eight points higher from uh, from about this level, giving us an objective up near 154. 154 is still a, a, a distance off, and it's it's hard for me to believe the market could get there. But that's not what being objective about it uh, about looking at the market is. Following price action objectively is, is what I try to do here, and that's what we're looking at. And we continue to see this pattern on the short-term time frame of higher highs and higher lows. So we continue to be in a short-term healthy uptrend. The intermediate-term trend has now turned higher as well, and we have that confirmation with the rising five-day moving average. So I think that the uh, support down near um, 144 uh, and then I'd say 140, uh, 143 below that seems to be uh, where we're going to find support if this market does pull back from here. But it's starting to show good signs in the short term, although Again, on the daily time frame, we've still got that declining 50-day moving average, which tells us that we have to be very careful in here. You still want to be trading smaller share size than normal and be quick to exit your positions as they're moving against you. Again, the low volume doesn't mean sell, and it doesn't mean sell short. You want to wait for price to confirm what you might sus uh, suspect as a selling opportunity. There's no evidence here that it's the right time to be a seller on a short-term time frame. The longer term time frame, I still think most people probably ought to be in cash here until we get more clarity. Um, but market is, is showing signs of stability, and that's the, the key thing here. It is also coming potentially into uh, that area where we, we might find resistance, potential source of resistance. 148.5 or so was a prior important level. But we've, we've managed to get above some key levels so far, and, and that's, again, that's the important thing to remember. I was looking for last Thursday when we got the bounce off the 200-day moving average. I suspected that this rally might be able to continue up towards 37 to 37 and a half. You can see it's right at that declining 20-day moving average right now, and we've got this 50-day moving average over here that's flattened out. So um, again, lighter volume in here doesn't mean sell, doesn't mean sell short. It means that if the sellers come back into this market, there's not a very strong base of support underneath it to hold it up and that could likely lead to a retest of that 200 day moving average so we're still not completely out of the woods yet but when you look at these shorter term time frames again we've got a rising five day moving average that's a good sign right now 
I think breaking below uh, yesterday afternoon's low at about 36.95 or so, that might lead to a little bit further uh, downside and you want to get defensive. But right now, um, you know, this, this daily time frame is still a mess. Uh, there's, that, that's, that's how you have to look at it. We're getting a low volume bounce, but it is continuing to bounce, and the only thing that pays is price. Uh, the IWM, same thing here. We've got, uh, you know, this market keeps coming up to this 200-day moving average. Um, yesterday I had suggested that maybe it was building an inverted head and shoulders pattern. Another reader said maybe it's a double bottom. Maybe it's an ascending triangle or a cup and a handle. The point is, it looks like the buyers are, are, are getting more aggressive. We see these higher lows in here. And we've got this resistance at $80.20 that if that's taken out decisively, then it puts it back above this 200-day moving average. And maybe we'll get a run up to the 50-day moving average right here at about 81. And that's where you would expect also a source of supply from these this prior level of support. So... Although it's still showing signs of, of, of uh, improving, improving on the shorter term time frames, the longer term time frames don't really confirm that it's time to jump back in aggressively here. I still think you want to be careful overall. The Qs, the NASDAQ 100, this market, uh, last week, again, we saw that huge volume without the further downside progress on Thursday. And that's where we've seen the stability and this continued rally. I thought that uh, the 47 level um, had, you know, it, well, the 47 level had been a prior level of support uh, back in here. And we'd seen the one breakdown below it, it trap some uh, shorts, they got squeezed, and then they took back control at that 47 level. Um, yesterday we, we were closing just below that 47 level. Today we're back above it. So uh, now we've got a rising five day moving average. So things look better here, although the market has come a pretty long way in a short period of time. It also exceeded this Fibonacci level. You can see it gapped right up above that and held that level of support today. So that's what would be considered to be a reversal of this most recent downtrend. The fact that it was able to push past that 61.8% retracement of the weakness says, according to Fibonacci, that it's a reversal. I don't think that means that you rush in and buy everything, but we do have this continued pattern of higher highs and higher lows, and let's just keep continue to monitor that. I think that, that hopefully 47 will prove to be a level of support going forward from here, but again, there's still dangers in this market. We don't know if this is a, a bounce within a downtrend yet, but uh, it's uh, the, the buyers are showing that they are being persistent in here right now.